Heather, we are now moving to member statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you much, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on November 11th of next week, Canadians and Ontarians will be reflecting on the many sacrifices made by men and women that ensured Canada's freedoms and values. On this day, Polish Canadians will also be reflecting on their own history of fighting for the protection of the same values. November 11, 1918, is a powerful and historic date for the Polish nation. It is the day in which Poland regained its independence following 123 years of partitions, occupations, and basically being wiped off the map of Europe. Wow. Following the partitions perpetuated by Austria, Prussia, and Russia, many uprisings and struggles, Poles managed to win back their freedom and rightful sovereignty, owing largely to their patriotism and heroism. This year marks the 97th anniversary since Polish re-established itself as an important European democracy. Polish Independence Day is the most important national holiday in Poland, and today I'm pleased to welcome Mr. Gregor Szmorowski, Council General of the Republic of Poland, to the Legislature. For Poles around the world, this day celebrates the strength, bravery, resilience of their peoples who for centuries have fought to maintain their national sovereignty against many perpetrators who have tried to make an affront. Here in Ontario, we are proud of the contributions Polish Canadians have made to our province since first settling here more than 155 years ago. I am very pleased to meet many Polish Canadians over the last few months and attend various community events. And earlier this year, I had the honour to pay tribute to the all-volunteer Polish Blue Army and lay a wreath at the annual Niagara and Lake Pilmigridge organized by the Canadian Polish Congress. Today, I'd like to extend my warmest wishes to all Polish Canadians celebrating Polish Independence here, here. Day. Thank you. Member Statements, the member from Welland. Thank you, Speaker. I'm proud to dedicate my statement today to the members of OPSU Local 294, who, after two years, are still without a first contract with their employer, Care Partners. The community nurses have been on strike for over six months. Meanwhile, this government has done nothing for the nurses, their patients, nor has it taken any steps to stop the continued trend of privatization of our home care services. For over six months, 1,400 affected patients in my region have gone without consistent complex nursing care. These patients who depend on community nurses for cancer care, dialysis, and wound treatment. With the holiday season around the corner, members of Local 294 in the region are starting an Adopt-a-Striker campaign to support striking nurses and their families who will no doubt suffer the most. Uh, during the uh, holiday season. It's uh, unacceptable that our nurses have to go to these extremes to ensure patients that depend on them are getting the services they need. Sadly, the Care Partners CEO, a for-profit, is too concerned about letting her own salary and, and perks uh, balloon to more than $700,000 and putting patients and respect for our nurses first. I'd like to thank OPSU Local 294 for starting the Adopt-a-Striker particularly at Christmas, and for their incredible support for ensuring striking nurses will be able to enjoy and celebrate the holiday season accordingly. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from uh, Topical Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, recently, I was very pleased to tour the Ontario Food Terminal in Etobicoke Lakeshore and meet with their general manager, Bruce Nicholas, and his uh, wonderful management team. I, I'm very proud to have the terminal in my riding. This is the largest wholesale, wholesale fruit and produce distribution centre in Canada and the third largest in North America. Uh, the terminal distributes over two billion pounds of produce annually, an average of five and a half million pounds per day. Located on 40 acres of land, it was established in 1954 to provide a convenient, efficient and low-cost receiving and shipping facility uh, for wholesalers of fruit and produce and now serves all of eastern Canada and some of the northern United States. Uh, the Ontario Food Terminal acts as a stock exchange for fruits and vegetables, where prices are determined by supply and demand and can change daily. Uh, owned and operated by the Food Terminal Board, an operational enterprise under the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, no public monies are used in the operation of this unique facility. It's entirely self-funded from fees charged to the users of the facility. They also have a wonderful far farmer's market for over 400 tenants who sell local Ontario produce. The terminal supports Ontario farmers, local fruit and vegetable stores, and independent supermarkets. Very proud the terminal is making a number of renovations and improvements to maintain its place as the premier fresh food distribution market in Canada. The modernization of the food terminal will guarantee its role in our food distribution system for decades to come. Thank you. Further member statement. The member from Dufferin Calvary. Thank you, Speaker. 
At this special time of year, people of East Indian heritage across the world are celebrating the Festival of Lights. Diwali signifies the victory of light over darkness. This November, thousands of our East Indian friends in Ontario will light candles during Diwali as a reminder that light always prevails over darkness. Our leader, Patrick Brown, has attended several Diwali celebrations in the past few weeks and will be attending many more in the weeks to come with our caucus. I look forward to attending a Diwali party in Brampton tomorrow evening where I have an opportunity to reconnect with friends and indulge in the rich Indian culture. At each event we attend, we are grateful to be welcomed by members of the community with warmth and openness. This is a testament of how Indian cultures contribute to Ontario's multicultural mosaic. We have the great privilege in this province of experiencing the best of many different heritages. This is what makes Ontario the best place in the world to live and something we should never take for granted. Mr. Speaker, the Indo-Canadian community in Ontario, consisting of almost 700,000 people, is vital to the economic, social and cultural complexion of our province. Since the early part of the 20th century, Indo-Canadians have played an important contribution to Ontario's growth and success. On behalf of Patrick Brown and the official opposition, I wish all our friends light and happiness during Diwali. Well Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. You know, it's never too early to start thinking about Christmas. Some of us these days need a little inspiration and motivation. To that end, Knox Waterloo is hosting a musical celebration, Sounds of Christmas, in support of Kids' Ability. Kids' Ability is the recognized leader in Waterloo Region and Guelph Wellington for empowering children and youth with a wide range of complex special needs to realize their potential. This year's musical organizer, Nicole Koo, spoke passionately about this event. For her, it is a way to pay it forward and express her gratitude as her family was fortunate enough to access support through Kids' Ability. This fundraiser also highlights the musical talent in our community, and finally, it represents a wonderful opportunity to come together in celebration, really of generosity but also of community and compassion. It reminds me of something that spiritual leader Henry Nuon wrote, every human being has a great yet often unknown gift to care, to be compassionate, to become present to the other, to listen, to hear, and to receive. If that gift would be set free and made available, miracles could take place. And let me tell you, Mr. Speaker, families that find the support and compassionate education at Kids' Ability often express their wonder at this miracle of accessing this unique and special place where every child has the opportunity to reach their potential. For parents and children, it is a place of hope. Uh, I hope if you are in the region, you will join us at Knox Waterloo for the musical Sounds of Christmas in support of Kids' Ability. More information can be found on the Knox Waterloo website. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker, and I'm delighted today to tell the House about Justice Ryan, who is a resident of Beaches, East York, and a grade 12 school student at Malvern Collegiate. Now, Ms. Ryan was recently awarded one of six James Barlaman Aboriginal Youth Creative Writing Awards. And this prestigious award, which was created by our 27th Lieutenant Governor, celebrates Aboriginal youth writing and was presented in recognition of Miss Ryan's courageous and innovative comic strip called The Escape. The Escape tells the story of a young girl who flees from a residential school, only to be caught and forced to endure horrendous abuse. But along the way, the story's hero learns not to judge people by their looks and to take strength in her Aboriginal heritage. In an interview with the Beach Mirror, a community newspaper, Ms. Ryan recounts that her goal was to not only promote awareness about residential schools and the terrible abuses that happened there, but also to share a story of courage. Mr. Speaker, for a grade 12 student to tackle such an important subject and for that work to be presented and recognized at the highest levels by the province of Ontario is itself a story of courage. Now, I had the pleasure of meeting Ms. Ryan October 26 here at Queen's Park when she received her award with Mr. Barlaman, the Minister of Immigration and Citizenship, and um, the current Lieutenant Governor, the Honourable Elizabeth Dodswell. On behalf of the House and the constituents of Beaches East York, I congratulate Justice Bryan on her achievements and I commend her for celebrating her, her, her Aboriginal heritage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Nipissing. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Pleased to rise today to read to you in the legislature a poem written by uh, Comrade Lionel Murphy. He's a 90 year old veteran in the city of North Bay with Legion Branch 23, and it's called On This Great Day. I wandered through the field today, a field of marble stone. So many men laying here, some stones were marked unknown. They gave their lives that we might live, 
the life we live today, make sure the life they gave us was not just thrown away. So many that have fallen in battle, lost and won, so many young lives taken before their lives begun. No loving wives to bear a family, just kith and kin to mourn. They fought for love, not for fame. For love of country, they lit the flame. They died alone or in a crowd. For those that did so, let's be proud. The, fa the sacrifice they made was real, and now they lay in far-off fields. Their duty done, the torches passed. We must not let their memory lapse and take the torch that they have passed. For if we fail to carry on, our liberty may soon be gone, and many young lives will bear the cross of liberty that we have lost. I say thank you to Lionel Murphy in North Bay. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise in the House to acknowledge a wonderful organization in my riding, Community Living Burlington, on the occasion of their 60th anniversary open house, which I had the privilege of attending on October 25th. This open house was a celebration of 60 years of service to the community of Burlington and a reflection of Community Living's humble beginnings where, in 1955, a group of parents met to discuss educational opportunities for their children. A grassroots organization was formed to care for children with developmental disabilities since, as was the practice then, they were sent to large institutions away from their families. Very sadly, their parents thought this was their only option. As Executive Director Judy Pride said, parents were told by medical professionals that they should not and could not take care of their children. Today, thanks to the love and determination of those parents, Community Living Burlington has grown to an organization that provides support to more than 400 people with a developmental disability and their families, thanks to an exceptional staff team of over 300 employees. These services include children's inclusion services, residential supports, employment services, and day programs. These programs assist their clients in developing independence, building social, emotional, and community participation skills while encouraging learning and professional development. And they provide important respite to parents and caregivers, too. I'm deeply grateful. I had the opportunity to celebrate 60 wonderful years with Community Living, and I want to thank them for inviting me to their wonderful celebration. On behalf of all of Burlington, I'd like to thank them for their continued selfless service to our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Stamets, the member from Ottawa, all Lyon. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I know all of us were interested to see the result of the election on October 19. Yes, we were. But the results are important in a way that goes far beyond party lines, Mr. President. J'étais fier de voir qu'il y a. I was proud to see that there was a result for women in this election that beats all records. In the 42nd Parliament, we've seen 88 women representing constituencies throughout Canada. 26% of seats in the House of Commons, 13 more women than before. I am happy that the Prime Minister has fulfilled the promise made to appoint a cabinet with gender parity with women for the first time making up half of the federal cabinet. Merci, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Et je crois que un groupe to be elected as part of a group of 38 elected women to the Ontario Legislature, here, here. and I value and appreciate the unique voice my fellow MPPs bring to the Legislature, and I look forward to seeing this thread continue in Parliament. I encourage every single uh, young woman to consider politics as a career, Monsieur le Président. Merci. Absolutely. Merci beaucoup. Thank all members for their statement.